In this video I'd like to go over this example where a train is traveling along a track at 2 meters per second and begins to accelerate at a is equal to 60 times the velocity to the minus fourth meters per second and I want to figure out the velocity and the position of the train after it's been moving for three seconds. So the first thing I always want to do is write down what I know about the problem. So the train uh, is moving with a constant velocity. So its initial velocity is going to be two meters per second. And it's also accelerating in the same direction. So its acceleration is going to be equal to 60 times the velocity to the minus fourth uh, meters per second squared. And this needs to be squared. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the final position and the final velocity when t is equal to three seconds. Now, when you have a problem like this, the first thing you might want to try is you might want to look at these kinematic equations that relate positions, velocities, accelerations, and times. However, in this case, uh, you're not able to use these equations because the condition for these equations is that your acceleration is constant. And our acceleration is not constant. Our acceleration is uh, dependent on the velocity. So it has this V term in here and it's not constant. So therefore we're not allowed to use these equations. And instead we're going to have to look at the definition of acceleration and the definition of velocity to uh, answer these questions. So let's clean this up a little bit. And if we look at what that acceleration, uh, what the definition for acceleration is, one of the definitions we have is our acceleration is equal to dv uh, dt. And we have, it's the change in velocity over some change in time. And we have an expression for acceleration. We have our acceleration is equal to 60 times v to the minus fourth, and that's equal to dv dt. Now, I want to separate my variables. I want to bring the t's over to this side, the v's over to this side, and I can rewrite this as uh, dt is equal to dv over 60 v to the minus fourth. And I want to rewrite this expression a little bit to get rid of this minus sign. Uh, I have, it makes it easier to do integrals for me. So if I look at this, I have a dv over 60 v to the minus fourth that's really equal to a dv over 60 over v to the fourth. And if I multiply by the reciprocal of this, what I get is this is equal to v to the fourth times dv over 60. And that's how I'm going to write this. I'm going to have dt is equal to v to the fourth dv over 60. And the next thing I want to do is I want to integrate both sides. So I first separated and now I integrate. And I'm going to integrate from some final time t to an initial time t zero. And on this side, I'm going to integrate from a final velocity vf to an initial velocity v zero. Now this side's easy to integrate. Uh, on this side, I'm just going to have t, which is evaluated from t to t zero. And that's going to be equal to, on this side, uh, this 60 can come out front. So we just have to integrate uh, v to the fourth. So let's, let's just write down all of our steps. So we have one over 60, the integral of v to the fourth dv from a final velocity to an initial, uh, initial velocity, which is v zero. And I think we're still on the screen. So t, this is going to be a t minus t zero is equal to, this is going to be v to the fifth over five. 
So we're going to have 1 over 60 times v to the fifth over 5. And this is going to be evaluated from some final velocity to an initial velocity. Now, let's go to a new column. I think about it from room. So we're going to have t minus some initial time is equal to v to the fifth. So v final to the fifth over 60 times 5 is 300 minus v initial to the fifth over 300. Now I'm going to plug in some numbers I know. Uh, so t0 is going to be 0. So this, this term is just going to go away. And v0 right here is going to be our initial velocity, which is 2 meters, uh, two meters per second. So here we have t is equal to v, our final velocity to the fifth, over 300 minus 2 to the fifth, which is 32. So minus 32 over 300. And we're looking for a final velocity. So let's solve for what our velocity is. And we're going to first multiply both sides by 300. So I'm going to pick a new color. So we're going to have 300 times t is equal to our final velocity to the fifth minus 32. And then our final velocity to the fifth is equal to this 300 t. And then we're going to add the 32 to the other side, so plus 32. And finally, we're going to, this is to the fifth, so we have to take the fifth root. We're going to do our final velocity. Let's, let's write it on the other side. Our final velocity is equal to the fifth root of 300 times some time plus 32. Now, our time is three seconds, so we're going to put three in. And our final velocity, and I'm also going to write this as uh, to the one fifth. So this is an equivalent expression. And now I'm going to have 300 times 3, which is 900. So 900 plus 32 is going to be 932. 932 to the 1 fifth. 932 to the 1 fifth is 3.93 meters per second. So our final velocity, our final velocity when t is equal to 3 is equal to 3.93 meters per second. So this is the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem is asking for what its position is. So again, we're going to have to go through these integration steps. And, and let's clean this up a little bit. Let's look at what the definition for um, the velocity is. So we know a velocity is equal to a change in position, so dx divided by dt. And again, we have an expression for dx. We have an expression right here uh, for v. Uh, here's our expression for velocity. So our velocity, our velocity is equal to 300 t plus 32 to the 1 fifth is equal to dx dt. Now I want to bring my, let's, uh, let's keep this color coded a little bit. And I want to, again, separate my, inter uh, separate my variables and integrate. So I'm going to bring dt to this side. And when I do that, I get uh, 300 t plus 32 to the 1 fifth 
times dt is equal to dx. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. And this is going to be some, from some final x to some initial x. And this is going to be from some final time to some initial time. Now, when I integrate, this is a tougher integral to integrate. Uh, we have this 1 fifth power, this t terms in the inside. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to use u substitution. So let's you say u is going to be equal to 300 t plus 32. So if I differentiate this expression with respect to t, I'm going to have du over dt is equal to 300. Now I want to know what my dt is, so I'm going to have uh, du over 300 is equal to dt. So I have divided by 300 here, multiplied by dt here, and I can substitute this in. So when I go to this integral, I go from a final t to an initial t. Uh, this becomes u. So I said u is equal to this. And this is to the 1 fifth. And then dt right here is going to be equal to du, du over 300. And this is going to be equal to the integral from a final position to an initial position of dx. Now again, this side of the integral is really easy to, uh, to evaluate. So this is just going to be x, which is evaluated from a final x to an initial x. And this is just going to be x final minus x initial. And in our case, x final is what we're looking for for the problem, the position. In x initial, we're just going to take to be a zero point. So x initial is equal to zero. Now let's look at this side, the more interesting side. When we evaluate this integral, we need to, well first let's take the 300 outside of the integral. So we have one over 300, and then we have the integral from a final time to an initial time, times u to the 1 fifth du. And we can just use the power rule right here. So we can have 1 over 300 times. We're going to add 1, 5 over 5, to 1 fifth. So we're going to have u to the 6 fifths, and then divided by 6 over 5. So when we make, when we divide by reciprocal, that becomes 5 over 6. And this is going to be evaluated from a final time to an initial time. And this initial time is going to be equal to 0. And the last thing we need to do is we need to uh, put back in our u substitution. So our final is going to be 1 over 300 uh, times 5 to the 300 t plus 32 to the 6 fifths divided by 6. So that's going to be um, this right here. This 5 is going to cancel out. That's going to become a 60. So we're going to have 1 over 360 times, so this, this 1 is really not there. This is just going to be 300 t plus 32 to the 6 fifths over 360 evaluated from a final position, or final time, which is 3 seconds. So 3 to an initial time, which is 0. Now we can't, uh, yeah, so let's do from a final time to an initial time. And when we do that, we get 300 TF plus 32 
to the 6 fifths divided by 360 minus 300 T, I think I called it TI this time, plus 32 to the 6 fifths divided by 360. And this is going to equal this side of the expression. So this is going to equal uh, our final x. And let's quickly evaluate this. So we're going to have, if our initial time is 0, and our final time is equal to 3, we're going to have 300 times 3 plus 32 to the 6 fifths divided by 360 minus 300 times 0 plus 32 to the 6 fifths divided by 360. And this is going to be equal to our final x. Now we need to evaluate these. So we're going to have 932 to the 6 fifths divided by 360 and that's 10.16 so here this is 10.16 and minus this 300 goes away so it's going to be 32 to the 6 fifths divided by 300 so 32 to the 6 fifths divided by 360 is 0.177 so minus 0 0.177 we'll call it 18.18 so 10.16 minus 0.18 is equal to 9.98 so our final x position is equal to 9.98 nine eight meters and so this is how far the train has traveled in the three seconds with an acceleration that's dependent on its velocity and is given by 60 times the velocity to the minus fourth there is a more direct way to solve it so if you use the differential equation a is equal to v times dv dx you can solve you can solve it more directly but I always don't really go I don't remember that equation that much uh, or that often so it will give you the right equation but it might not that that acceleration equation for whatever reason doesn't stick in my head as well as an acceleration of dx dt so I I suggest if you're looking to uh, work on this problem to try to verify that the acceleration will be given uh, the same, you, you'll get the same numbers by using this equation.